Have you been struggling to pick up momentum in your business? Are you stuck at a rank? Do you feel you're not building fast enough? Or are you scared to recruit people into your business? Now, if you answered yes to any of those questions, I need you to know that you are not alone. My story is not a story of a major health transformation or a rags to riches story. It's mine and I'm owning it and hopefully it will resonate with you today. I'm Dan Sadler, a pro three. I'm currently 39 years old and I live in South East London with John and our five cats. <clears throat> However, I haven't always been an entrepreneur. I was great at school, but by age 21, I dropped out of college three times and I couldn't find my groove in life. I spent 25 years touring the world as a musician and as a specialist music teacher back here in the UK. However, I had to work in pubs, bars and restaurants in order to supplement my income. I knew in my heart that something wasn't right. My health was declining. I wasn't getting any younger. I definitely wasn't getting any wealthier. But by 35 years old, I was still living month to month. I just moved to London, had no family near me, very few close friends here. I was sofa surfing to begin with and things were really, really tight. Now I always had quite a bit of month left at the end of the money and I was left wondering if I would ever get my lucky break. Then something completely unexpected happened. One day, my dad phoned me out of the blue not the type of phone call you want to have from your parents either. My dad had had a health scare um, and particular with his heart and his arteries and he was living in Florida. I couldn't afford the time or the expense to get out there and while things were improving for me they weren't improving fast enough so that I could drop everything and fly out to America. How could it be that I was approaching 40 and still live in this way? I mean this was when I found Life Vantage or when Life Vantage found me and I started my first home-based business. This was when my life was changed. My dad did recover in the end. I was introduced to our little yellow activator and I got so excited that I started right away before even trying it, can you believe? Um, and nobody had ever asked me to take a look at what they do before this. I was excited, but it, it wasn't an easy start for me in business. I had a difficult time showing others how much of a big deal this was. I was telling everyone and not showing them and there's a huge difference. Telling is selling and I wasn't following the system. I thought I had what it takes to be a success, but I lacked the skills. I definitely had the vision. Um, I was open, coachable, had an amazing product and company to work with. But all along the journey, my health was improving. I could get used to feeling this good. But in the business, I was a very slow starter. And I, as I said, I always had this big belief. After I got started, it took me 11 months to hit Pro 1 and then an extra 12 months to hit Pro 2. Then a further 18 months before I hit Pro 3. And I was watching new people join, fly past me. I had fallen into the comparison trap. It had slowed me down. I was starting to see that I needed to work on me. Now, everything changed for me when I went to the Elite Academy event in Kansas City. So you should congratulate yourself for being here today. Showing up to events can really make a big difference to your belief, mindset and business. Now at this time I was pro too and I was feeling stuck. I actually won a ticket to that event. Being in a room with 5,000 biohackers was life changing. Listening to all the leaders tell their story helped me with the skill set and mindset training that I needed. This was where I heard Erin Brockovich and Brian Tracy speaking on stage. The most interesting thing is that if I hadn't won that ticket to the, to, to the event, I probably would never have committed to that trip. Now, in the end, I managed to pull off a trip of a lifetime and even squeezed in a flight to Florida where I visited my dad. While I was in America, however, I made a decision, a decision to relaunch my business and start leading other people the way that I was being led. I pretty much started again from scratch. Within three months, I hit the rank. I learned that everything starts with a decision. Once I decided, it just happened. Anyway, that's enough about me. Let's dig into the training. I hope you've got a pen and paper at the ready. I'm really here today to talk about the foundational rank of Pro 3. If you've reached Pro 3, you would have likely already had some success collecting happy customers, found your first teamies, started helping them learn and apply the system, and most importantly, help them get their first success. Now, Pro 3 is where you see the monthly royalty commission start to look like a good part-time income. If you haven't already, please check out the income disclosure statement. What does it really look like to be a Pro 3? I've got some numbers for you here. Pro 3 is 5,000 a month in organizational volume. That's 5,000 in volume from you and your team's efforts. 
But let's imagine you are on your own for a, for a moment. Here are some examples of how you could get there. I'd say the fastest way, very unrealistic for most people, but it is possible. Five platinum packs in one calendar month equals Pro 3. Now, another fast way to do it, slightly more effort, still unrealistic for most people. It's been proven to work though. 30 silver pack distributors in one calendar month equals Pro 3. Now, an average but very effective way, realistic for most people, like me, um, is 62 dual synergizer customers over any period of time equals Pro 3. And slowest way, but for the super committed people who just love sharing the product, 124 NRF2 customers. Now, it's obvious here that recruiting is the fastest way to get to Pro 3. Why do we recruit, though? I'm, I'm, I'm guessing we're all the same. I recruit so that we can increase our ability to place these fabulous products in the hands of our deserving customers. Um, but now we're talking about rec recruiting. Just know that people will join you for one of three reasons. Number one, they just want to be like you. They'll go all the way to the top. They don't care how long it takes. They just know they're going to get there. Well, those people are rare and beware. M many people will tell you that that's them. Number two, they want to do a little bit of recruiting, but they're happy mainly being a customer collector. And number three, they have zero interest in building a team. They're 100% focused on their happy customers. Now, it's your duty as a leader to understand what your people want and need. Without this investment in them, they will be unlikely to stick it out with you. However, if you get it right, they will stay with you for a very long time. Now, when you have a small team to work with, naturally, you will be growing as a leader but you still need an emphasis on finding new customers and new distributors. So I hear you say, how do we stay in growth and push on to the next rank? Well, here are the three phases of network marketing. Phase one, builder mode, boots on the ground, looking for people, inviting, presenting, prospecting, growing. Phase two is management mode. You found some hopeful prospects and you put all your energy into helping them, but you've stopped doing the activity for yourself. Phase three, it's built. This is the dream. It's built, doesn't require much work anymore. You found 200 people over the life of the business. 30 were active, five were shiny, blue M&Ms or diamonds. However, that's not everybody's journey. So what phase are you in? It'd be really interesting to know. Pop your answers in the chat for me. Most people start out in phase one, and when they find their first recruits, they go straight into phase two. Phase one is the most important phase. Even our master pro 10, Rachel Pekarek, stays in phase one all of the time. She proved this by getting five dips in the bonus pools last month. Now, it's natural when you find your first business partner that you want to give them everything. You want to check in with them every day. To you, they are your world. They're like the new cool kid at school. They believed you. They're the new shiny toy. They're my pleasures. Okay, maybe that was a little far, but you do get the idea. And so what I want to talk about now is, this is a completely made up scenario, but it is a possibility for what happens when you find an average recruit. You may experience some or all of these things on the journey. Firstly, they join you, yay. Secondly, they may or may not want to do a launch call. Then they might not be sure about getting on a Zoom for the weekly team call because they might not like being around people they don't know. They, you, you might not see them inviting people to the overviews. You don't see any posts on social media about their business. They're not responding to your messages. It's like, ah, you're left there thinking, what am I doing wrong? Well, I've got a news flash for you guys. It's not you. At that stage, you've done everything possible to tool up that new distributor what you can't do is build it for them and at this stage it's so easy to quit blame the profession blame the company blame the leaders however that's not realistic and here are some facts for you 80 percent of people who join you in business will likely never recruit a single person into their business when you know this everything becomes easier 15 percent of people will be content in being a part of your team earning zero to 500 pound per month, this group of people may recruit a couple of people over the lifetime of their business. The remaining 5% of people will be people just like you and me. They want what you have. They're so hungry that they will show up and do it even if you weren't there to help them. Now, what you need to know is that all these people are important to your business, and here's why. 
if we were to look at the Pareto principle, otherwise known as the 80-20 rule, it says that 80% of your team will produce about 20% of the results. However, 20% of your team are likely to produce 80% of the results. Those are the high achievers that follow the system. They show up, they implement successful recruiting, training and coaching strategies. That leads to your team's growth. <clears throat> but let me be really clear here. The 80 percenters really do need your time. Some of them would have joined just to be close to you or just for a love of the products. Some of them have just joined to be a part of something bigger than themselves. However, they are all happy customers at the end of the day. Now, the best way to train these people is in a group setting, like a weekly team call. No more than 20% of your precious time needs to be spent working with this group of people. This gives them the ability to move forward at their own pace, allows them to feel like they're still in your world, even though they may not be your diamonds or superstars. They can do this without getting overwhelmed or pressured into creating the success. Now, don't frighten people off or get upset if they don't meet your expectations, as they will likely just turn around and walk away from you. But for the 20% of people that really do drive your business, your top producers and recruiters, you need to spend 80% of your time focusing on them. So to wrap it up, what does it look like to be a solid pro three with Life Vantage? Stay in builder mode. Remember, boots on the ground. Work closest with the people who are showing up and following the system. If you are struggling to get your team into action, remember the 80-20 rule and go out and find some more people. And really important, don't quit whatever you do. Keep turning up. And lastly, stay in action. So that is the story of a soon to be pro four. I'm Dan Sadler. You've been amazing. Thank you for watching. And I wish you all the success in your life and in your life vantage business. Thank you.